When you think about tarantulas, you probably picture these large and colorful spiders from South America, typically known as bird eaters. Or maybe the black and orange tarantulas found in the scrublands of Mexico. You might even picture the mysterious basorial tarantulas found across Africa and Southeast Asia, commonly referred to as earth tigers or baboons. But there are some species of tarantula living right here in the United States. Albeit not as colorful and massive, they are equally fascinating. Now, the majority of species that can be found here in the United United States, but not exclusively as we will discuss later, are from the genus Aphonopelma. This genus of tarantula are commonly found in North and Central America, and the name comes from the Greek word aphanos, which means voiceless or silent, and pelma, which means soul or foot. So Aphonopelma roughly translates to silent foot or voiceless foot, and this kind of reflects the stealthy nature of these spiders. If you want more information on how tarantulas and other animals get their binomial or scientific names, I have a video all about that that I will link at the end of this video. It is important to note that there are over 50 different species of tarantula that have been reported or described in the United States, but many of them have been poorly defined and not studied extensively, and most likely some of them are the same species just with different names. But scientists are undertaking the most comprehensive taxonomic study ever performed on a group of tarantulas, and they are studying the diversity and distribution of these spiders throughout the deserts, mountains, and scrublands of the American Southwest. Since a lot of these species look very similar, they can cannot be distinguished by appearance alone. So researchers in the field have implemented a modern approach to taxonomy by employing anatomical, behavioral, distributional, and genetic data. As of right now, this research has identified 29 different species of tarantula within the United States, 13 of which are new to science over this past decade. But that's enough for now. Let's go ahead and jump into this countdown. Starting off with number five, the Aphonopelma steindocneri. This species can be found in California, but their range also extends down into Mexico, specifically the Baja California region. Typically, they are found in the scrubland regions or forests burrowed under rocks or logs. Their coloration can vary to include shades of brown, black, or gray, but typically they are known as the black tarantula of the states. Like most tarantulas, they are nocturnal, solitary creatures that tend to avoid human contact at all costs, so finding one in nature can be challenging. But if you come across one in the wild, or you are fortunate enough to have a captive bred specimen as a pet, you will know that they are a fairly gentle species. They do not possess medically significant venom and only pose a threat to humans that might have an anaphylactic response to envenomation. But the chances of getting bit are very rare. This spider is not very defensive and will make every attempt, in most cases, to escape any threat before actually trying to bite. They are a very slow growing species, like most of Fondapelma tarantulas. So it is imperative that we, as a hobby, focus on breeding them in captivity and do not remove them from their natural environment. One gravid female taken out of the wild can have devastating consequences for that species in that area, as an entire generation of that spider will no longer be born within that environment. There is not a whole lot of information available on their conservation status, other than to say that they are not listed as threatened or endangered at this time. But like most tarantula species, they are facing threats due to habitat loss, fragmentation, extermination, and even wild collection for the pet trade. So, conservation efforts focus on protecting their natural habitats and regulating trade are essential for their long-term survival. I have an entire video on this species that I will link above as well as put down in the description if you want some more information. Let's move on to number four, the Aphonopelma moderatum. Commonly referred to as the Rio Grande Gold Tarantula, this spider is found in southern Texas as well as across the border into Mexico. They are one of the most easily identifiable tarantulas in the United States, with their tannish orange color and black or dark brown abdomen and bands on their legs. They're a little reminiscent of a dull Mexican red knee tarantula. They are revered for not just their beauty, but also their hardiness, long lifespan, and docile attitude. They are a great species for a pet tarantula, but they also play a pivotal role in insect management in their environments in the wild. So removing them from nature can have a detrimental effect on their ecosystem, which is why it is paramount to only keep captive bred specimens as pets. Their venom is also not considered dangerous to humans, but like almost all New World tarantulas, if you don't know what that means, I will link a video above that explains that in detail. They possess urticating hairs 
as their main defense mechanism. So when threatened, they will typically try to escape any perceived danger and kick up a cloud of urticating sete from their abdomen as they flee. These hairs will lodge into the skin or eyes of their aggressor and can be very uncomfortable. It feels a lot like fiberglass in its effects. It can cause a histamine reaction, leading to intense itching and even small welts or bumps. And this can last for a few hours to a few days. If the hair gets into the eyes, they can also cause temporary blindness and will require medical attention. While they are obligate burrowers that will dig out their own burrows in nature, they also are known to move into abandoned burrows made by other animals. In captivity, they will stay hidden in their burrows while young, but as they get larger, you will find that they spend a lot more time out in the open and on display, making them one of the coolest pet tarantulas that can be found within the US. Number three, the Aphonopelma hensi. This spider has a lot of common names, including the Texas Brown, Oklahoma Brown, Missouri Tarantula, and the Arkansas Chocolate Tarantula. And I'm sure there are a lot more, so let me know down below in the comments what common names I might have missed. As all these common names suggest, this tarantula can be found in the scrublands or southwest prairies of Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana. But that range can extend slightly outside of these state lines in similar environments. As far as tarantulas go, they have a pretty big basic, maybe even boring appearance. They are a brown tarantula with no real pattern or pops of color, though males will have a different appearance once they mature as their legs will change to almost black while still having a brown carapace. This is most likely the species you see in the news every fall when people in Colorado and other states in that region find wandering males out and about during the day as these spiders search for a mate. In fact, most viral videos online featuring tarantulas in the United States are showcasing male Afonopelma hensi. Most famously was a report of raining tarantulas, where birds were flying down and picking up the wandering males up off the ground to eat them, but probably got hit with some of their urticating hairs mid-flight and they let go, dropping the tarantula onto unsuspecting people walking through town going about their business. Despite being an easy meal for birds, their main predator is the tarantula hawk, at least in the regions where these two species overlap. They are not the largest tarantula, with a leg span of only four inches or so, but they are very long-lived. In fact, there was one study I found online that suggests they can live up to 40 years in captivity. But no one has actually studied them for that long of a time consecutively, so that is not really a confirmed fact. Of course, the males have a much shorter lifespan and typically die within one year of reaching sexual maturity. They are another very docile species that makes a great pet, but even though they are not listed as a protected species, they face the same threats as the other spiders on this list and should never be removed from the wild unless done so responsibly by professionals with the proper permission. They play a vital role in their ecosystems. So if you come across one in the wild, just appreciate them in nature and and leave them be. If you want to keep one as a pet, there are plenty of captive bred spiderlings available in the pet trade, and you can easily and cheaply get a pet tarantula from your local tarantula dealer. Now it's time for number two, the Afonopelma Annex. The Texas tan tarantula, as it is commonly known, is, as its name suggests, native to Texas. But it can also be found across the border into northern Mexico. This black and tan tarantula is gorgeous with its velvety appearance. It is also the largest tarantula in the United States, coming in with a leg span of just over five inches, with some reports suggesting mature females can get as large as nearly six inches. They are found in the semi-arid regions of Texas, in the grassland and shrub forests, but can also venture into the cities to make their homes in parks and backyards. They are a very long-lived species, with females reaching 30 to 40 year lifespans, which is amazing, but also means that they are very slow growing and slow to mature. They are also very hardy and easy to care for in captivity, so combined with their docile nature and long lifespan, they make an excellent pet tarantula, especially for new keepers or people who are looking for a tarantula for their children, school, or museum. This is one of the species of tarantulas that I keep that might possibly outlive me, which is definitely something you should think about when preparing your will. While they do have urticating hairs, like all tarantulas on this list, mine has never actually kicked hairs at me. They do kick them because I can see the bald spot on their abdomen where the urticating sete used to be. But in my experience, they typically seem to kick those hairs around their burrow, almost like marking territory or setting up a boundary. In all of my interactions with them though, I have never had one kick hair in self-defense. With their tan bodies and chocolate or black legs, this species has a unique beauty to it. And when combined with its temperament and the fact that they are almost always out in the open in their enclosure, this is a perfect tarantula to keep as a 
pet or to have on display for educational purposes. But like with any species on this list, it is best to never remove this tarantula from the wild. Let them live their life and fulfill their roles in their native ecosystem. This is such a popular species in the hobby that there is no shortage of captive bred specimens available if you would like to keep an Afana Pelma Anax as a pet. And before we get into the number one tarantula species in the United States, there are a couple of honorable mentions I want to tell you about first. Starting off with the Afana Pelma Johnny Cashew. Now this tarantula is just cool. It was first described in 2015, and since it was originally found near the Folsom Prison in California, it was named after Johnny Cash. For you youngins watching, Johnny Cash was the man in black, a famous singer-songwriter from your grandparents or great-grandparents' time, who was an absolute badass and famous for, among many things, writing the song Folsom Prison Blues. Found living in the plains and foothills of the western Sierra Nevada mountains, only the males keep their all-black appearance as adults. Females will mature to have a more brown or even tan appearance with some striping on their legs. As cool as this spider is, it is so similar to the Steindock Nary, it just didn't make the cut for the top five US species. But it definitely deserves a mention. Now for this honorable mention, you better get your keyboards ready, because I'm sure this is going to upset some people. The last honorable mention is the Tilicato Vogans. Now before you get too upset, I know, the Mexican red rump tarantula is obviously native to Mexico, and it is not a tarantula endemic to the United States, which is why it technically did not make the top five. I mention it only because there is a small population of this species that can be found in St. Lucie County, Florida, just west of Fort Pierce. In 1996, citrus grove workers found this tarantula and sent it to Gainesville, Florida to be identified. Then a week later, workers on the same farm found a female with several spiderlings as they were digging up the grove. Initially, it was thought that these tarantulas occupied just one acre in the 40-acre grove, but subsequent studies have found them along irrigation canals, bordering the grove, up to a mile away from where they were originally discovered. The thinking seems to be that they were initially introduced when someone released a pet they no longer wanted into the wild. But there are also allegations that several specimens may have been released by a commercial pet importer or breeder at this location during the 1970s. How they got there might always be a mystery, but what is more intriguing is the fact that they have not dispersed much after all of these decades. Their current location seems to meet all their needs, with an abundance of food, water, and dirt conducive to their burrowing habits, so they have not seemed to spread out into the surrounding areas, and they stay mostly within this large citrus grove. And now it's time for the number one tarantula species that lives within the United States. I'm sure it's no surprise because it is one of my favorite tarantula species, and that is the Afonapelma calcotes. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of the Arizona Blonde or the Desert Blonde Tarantula. They are the golden retriever of the tarantula world. They are docile, gorgeous, and as adults, they're almost always out in the open and on display. Though as spiderlings, they can stay in their burrow, hidden away for weeks or even months at a time. They are another long-lived tarantula, with reports of females surviving well past 30 years in captivity. As I mentioned while discussing the Johnny Cashy, there are some partially described species, like the Afonapelma species New River, that are most likely just a specific locale or a variant on the Calcotes. Though as research continues, maybe some of these location-specific species thought to be Calcotes might actually end up being their own species. I have multiple videos on this tarantula, and I will link one above right now, but I will also have others linked down below in the description. So if you want more information, just click the highlighted more under this video, and it will open up the description. This beautiful blonde spider does not have medically significant venom, and it rarely gives a threat pose or acts defensively at all. They might retreat to hide in their if they feel threatened, but even though they possess urticating hairs, they rarely kick them, and if they do, their hairs are known to be among the least irritating to humans. As spiderlings, they are a pretty drab color, and take what seems like forever to finally grow into their adult color and size. But if you can find a well-established, captive-bred juvenile, that is always the best way to go, even though spiderlings are generally widely available and fairly cheap, at least here in the States. In other countries, they can be very difficult to find, and they can be very expensive when they are available. I actually gave an Arizona blonde tarantula to Garrett from Reach Out Reptiles and hand delivered her to him at his facility. I will link that video in the description as well. His daughter named her Kiwi, which is a very fitting name. And they like Kiwi so much, they ended up getting several more desert blonde tarantulas that they use as ambassador animals for educational purposes when they have tours or events. This is a great species that lands in the top spots of a lot of my tarantula countdown videos, but with very good reason. So I highly suggest this species as the jewel of American tarantulas and hope you will find them as beautiful and as fascinating as I do. Since I'm sure
sure someone will inevitably ask in the comments, I got most, if not all of these tarantulas from Micro Wilderness. I have a link and a discount code for them down below in the description as well, because they are my go-to breeder for American tarantula species. And they are involved in many conservation and breeding projects for these tarantulas. So if you take nothing away from this video, let it be this. America has some beautiful tarantulas that should not be feared or destroyed on site. They present no real threat to humans and are very helpful in controlling the populations of pests and other annoying insects. So if you come across one of these tarantulas while hiking or hanging out in your backyard, don't panic and definitely don't try to kill or capture them. They will always be more scared of you than you are of them. And if you let them be, they can play a pivotal role in keeping the mice and annoying insects at bay. So let them be to do their thing and count yourself lucky that one of these elusive American tarantulas revealed themselves to you. If there is an American tarantula species that did not make my list, but you feel like it should have, be sure to tell us all about it in the comments down below. Who knows, your suggestion might make the next tarantula countdown video. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective Origin Series coffee, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>